Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of RPT, season number seven. I'm excited to be back. Episode number 80. It is Wednesday, August 18th, the year of our Lord, 2021. Man, it's almost my birthday, bro. Yeah, happy early birthday. The 23rd, big doc. It's gonna be 40 again. <laughs> hey, 40 is the new 20. I know. Um, man, we gotta, I, I gotta do a little something with the fellas for my birthday. I like um, it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think of something, maybe a little cigar bar. Okay. Something player. Okay. Might have to document it for the YouTube. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? On some grown man shit, you know. A couple cigars I, in a bottle, you know? Hey, man, see, now you're speaking my language, bro. Um, let me see if it's in my budget. Freedom of Speech Tour, August 18th. Uh, tonight, I'm in San Jose, California at the Improv. Don't miss it. Yeah, yeah, Ria. Denver, Calirado. That's fucked up, huh? <laughs> August 27th through the 29th. El Paso, the 915, Chuco Town, September 9th through the 11th. Brea, California, September 15th. Oxnard, top of the food chain, September 16th. Addison, Texas, October 7th through the 10th. San Antonio, October 14th through the 16th. Irvine, November 3rd. Houston, November 5th through the 7th. I was going through some old pictures on my phone yesterday, and I'm seeing, like, old footage from shows. Like, thank you. <sighs> like, the line in San Antonio just, shh, like, outside of the venue. Uh, I'm hyped, brother. Dude, I can see. I, yeah, I, I can tell. I want to get back to it. You came back, uh, You came back. Uh, what do you call it, inspired from the Schultz show. Yeah, man. We went and checked out Andrew Schultz. Uh, Rob was supposed to be there, but he was there in spirit. Yeah, I know. Um, I was going to get you a tour t-shirt, but I had to go backstage and get a photo with Schultz. <laughs> That's cool. Who'd you uh, go with? Me and my brother-in-law. Nice. Yeah, yeah. My brother-in-law, Ruben. And, Badass. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, dude, I was inspired, brother. Just seeing how far Schultz and, and the crew has come. Yeah. They're, they're in a private jet now, baby. It's dude. different now. There's levels to that shit. I was just actually, I went down a rabbit hole, some old flagrant two like clips, and they've been doing it since... 18, 17, 18 is when they like first started Flagrant 2. And to see where that podcast is like, what it's evolved to and like the level. 18, they've been doing it. Let me see. 18, 19, 20, 21. At least they've been doing it at least three or four years. Okay. Damn. How long How long I, I've been having a stream, an RSS feed? Uh, the What You Said podcast see you more. did for two years. Oh, okay. And then uh, we had like, you, you were doing it for about two years before I came in. And then we did it for a year and then the lockdown. And now we've been doing this for nine months. Okay, so a long ass time. <laughs> <laughs> We've only been doing Patreon for six months, though. Hell yeah, man. Shout out to all the patrons. If you have not joined, hit us up, patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. If you care about your country and you want to join the discussion and you want the whole enchilada, you want all the premium content, all the bonus episodes, because, dude, right now I'm in TikTok jail. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, so what's the deal? Yeah, I mean, that's owned by China. Uh, basically, I, po I posted a video of the Afghani people jogging alongside the C-17 uh -huh. Air Force big old jumbo jet. And it wasn't even the part where people were falling off. None of that. It's just them jogging. And I put, bad boys, bad boys. Oh, no. What you going to do? What you going to do when they come for you? You know what I'm saying? Because our southern border is open. And it's easy for Ahmed to be like, hey, I'm Julio. Bro. But anyway, I, I posted that and uh, TikTok didn't like it. You know, Xi Jinping uh, and the CCP didn't well, like it. Well, because they're already in there. You know, they've been there like swimmer in the Middle East. They've been there for a while. Man. You know, they're, they're making their little partnerships, you know. Man, bro. It's not even on the list, but we might as well start with that. Uh. Because, I mean, Afghanistan's obviously on there. I don't know if you have any input, but some of the Oh, yeah. No, so, we got a lot. That's a whole episode right there. Some of the stories that were coming out about how they've already been there for a hot minute and they're going to bring in their you, infrastructure. You're talking about China. Yeah. What do we even, should we even use that word anymore? Yeah, it's going to have to be with a J or something like China. Okay, all right. Or I'm China? thinking of something else if you say China. Yeah. Well, you know. Uh, Jin, Jin, no, that's uh, a restaurant. China? China. Um, or Gina. 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 Man, you know Gina you been know, there for G a minute. Gina been all up in there. <laughs> she getting deep up in there. Look, if you do not consistently tune into RPT, you're not going to catch the Magalingo. Gina wants the minerals. You know, Gina... She been over there, man. That's gonna be too tricky. It's got to be like uh, Chun Li. No, that's that's, that's not, fucked people, up. People people going. <laughs> that's Street Fighter. Don't disrespect Street Fighter. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, Shit. I, I be I be spelling it out. S e e s e e p e e. That's how you spell it. When in the comments and shit. I, sometimes I be like, hey man, C C. I put C H dash Y dash uh a ain't that some shit brother we be having to do all that i n uh yeah you be having to do, we have be having to do all this in america bro you have to even when you post something on your stories you gotta like you gotta fucking like block it out like put like a, a black you know like 
for, for the jab or for a certain word because the algorithm will pick up what's on that screen. Dude. If y'all not paying attention yet, uh, patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales because we're literally like one strike away. I think I had two strikes on TikTok uh, and I honestly did not think I was going to get a strike for that. I did not. It, I, to me, it's just a big old jumbo jet with some people jogging alongside it with some funny music behind it. Well, it's even crazier and just straight up, straight up silly is Tr- Sam Tripoli reposted a picture of Britney Spears that mm-hmm. she had posted on her feed, and yeah. he got like you know took, he got taken down. He got like a warning or whatever, a half ass strike. What are you gonna do, man? Like it's just it, it, we're that's the game that we're in. That's the world that we're playing in, and we have to we have to just play the rules. The sad part, the real story, is half the country's in denial about it. They're just like, it's a private company, bro. If you don't like it, go build your own TikTok. Chingo, back when you were a comedian, now you're just like a politician. <laughs> now you just want to be white. Talking about freedom all the time. You want to be white. How only white know? people want freedom. <laughs> <laughs> only, only white people want to know what's up. Oh, only pin- white people. Pinche gente pendeja. So... All right, here's the situation, man. Um, Joseph Raheem Breezy mm-hmm. has shit the bed. He only been he only been he's in been office. doing that for six months. Hey, man, his booty been cleaned already by the nurse. Uh, he only been in office seven months. Um, they trying to they trying to pin this thing on Trump. They trying to blame everything on Trump, but don't let the media bamboozle you. Yeah. Um. This this is my this is what I've gathered. Right? Okay. All right. Uh, basically, here's the situation. Uh, when they flew them, bu- them planes into the buildings, 9-11, we were like, man, we got to hunt down Osama and, you know, and Al-Qaeda, right? Even though it was like 16 Saudis and three other terrorists. Um, so we said, man, we think he in Afghanistan over there where the heroin and the poppy seeds is at, the poppy flowers. That's where he at. And they went through all the caves. They going through everywhere looking for him. Turns out he was in Pakistan right down the street from their um pakistan's version of west point like their military so their government probably knew now the taliban they used to work with us back when russia was in afghanistan so the taliban they're all about keeping keeping foreigners out they don't want no colonizers they don't want no uh whatever word they want to use they don't want no outsiders Mm -hmm. somehow some way i believe we even trained them Total, we've spent billions and billions and billions of dollars on this endless regime change war. People from uh, Tulsi Gabbard, Ron Paul, many, many people have argued that like either A, we should have never been there in the first place. B, we need to get out of there ASAP because we're spending so much money on their infrastructure. But what's happening is, is these government contracts, not only is, is war profitable, but you got people getting these contracts where it's like, man, we gonna build a natural gas gas station for 43 million for the Afghani people. And they have zero cars that run on natural gas. And it's just a skeleton, it's, dang- it's too dangerous to go down there. Uh, Ron Paul sent, sent some of his team to go and see what's going on with this money. Meanwhile, we got potholes up the street, Rob. Oh, dude, this road's terrible. <laughs> I hate driving to the studio, I'm not going to lie. Mm. No, but uh, so I keep hearing that the intel is to blame, right? The generals themselves are to mm-hmm. blame. Oh, the woke ones? The woke ones? The ones that was putting a pride flag in Af- over there in our embassy? Right, and because um, you can point the f- finger all day, right? And that's what they're doing. They're pointing the finger everywhere. They trying to blame Trump so bad, bro. I mean... He ain't in office. He is not in office, but he's still to blame for everything. You know, right. despite Obama, despite yeah. Bush, Yeah, despite... really. Bush, the one that really said it all. Exactly, and I've, I haven't really heard too many people say much about Bush, which yeah. I know that was a while back, but that's how it all started, right? Mm-hmm. So if you just blame the intel... Here's my thing. I watched uh, Kyle and uh, or Crystal and Sager mm-hmm. break it down. Right? Mm-hmm. If you can watch that, and and because I know I, if you watch Tucker and you watch a lot of the the right wing stuff, mm-hmm. a lot of what they say might just trigger you immediately. But I made it through the whole thing because, mm-hmm. and I told uh, a mutual friend of ours, I was like, man, Crystal couldn't have sucked off uh, Joe Biden's old PP any harder. Really? By just saying like, yeah, I stand by what he did. We needed to get out of there. Trump already had said that we were going to get out of there by May. However, here's the thing this is where people get it twisted. Sorry to cut you off. I'm going to hand it back over. Um, it was a botched exit. Mm-hmm. It was considered cut and run, mm-hmm. right? You didn't do it with any conditions. The way Trump was going to do it is he had already met with the Taliban. He had already told them. They had like a contract and everything. But he said, if you fuck around, if you get out of line, all right, we about to pull out. But if you violate anything, if we hear a peep, we about to blow up your whole fucking village, bro. And Biden didn't have no conditions, no negotiation. They just did a cut and run and left us out here like Saigon 
But anyway. Well, that, I'm hearing that as well too, right? Um, and I, I've seen or I've heard and seen so many different people break down so many different ways that we can point the fingers everywhere. So anyway, I'm also I'm gonna just blame Sleepy. We're I'm going, gonna, we're <laughs> I muscled through that whole video, and uh, and by the end of it, I was I didn't agree with her completely, obviously, because you can hear people who served in the military. I've seen tweets from people that are like, I served in the armed forces and I agree with what he did. We needed to get out of there. We couldn't have had one more American shot. But in, at the same time, there's a bunch of people that are left over there. Yeah, now they send in more troops to pull out the rest of the Americans that are stuck there. Then you have all our translators and allies. All the contractors. And then you yeah. have, exactly, contractors. Then you got women and children that's about to be enslaved, decapitated, raped, uh, forced marriage, all kind of shit. And then you got Tim Kennedy who tweets out, I mean, you mean to tell me that everyone is at the same place at the same time? Yeah, he said, no, he said, opp when opportunity, opportunity knocks, yeah. he said, you got the leadership of the Taliban yeah. all in Kabul right now in one area. He's like, let me know something. Yeah, and he'll, he'll show up. He'll, he's, he's definitely going to show up. Man, Tim Kennedy, that's his name, right? Mm -hmm. Tim Kennedy is gangster, bro. <sighs> that man is a gangster, bro. He, he He says straight up, he said, man, just give me permission. Me and my partners, we finna load up. We finna put all the little black shit on our face. You know, oh no, they do that more for like uh, nighttime, water, Navy SEAL, seal type, type shit. Yeah. But just for fun, they're going to put some black shit on their face. He would have made a great UFC champion had he ever made it to the top. He was in top 10 kind of a guy, but he was still in the military the entire time he was fighting. So he'd fight, he'd go, he'd be deployed, he'd fight, he'd, he'd back and forth in the, you know, I, I don't know, arguably, I guess the competition kind of took over. And he, he couldn't keep up with the young studs that were, you know, fighting in the UFC at the time. But anyway, he's still a badass, obviously. Yeah, yeah. He has his own private school up there in Austin. Oh yeah, the sheep. What is it, sheepdog? Well, or? that's his like. That's his like. Uh, like his preparedness, readiness for adults. But he has like a children's private school up there as well. What kind of school? Like an actual private school, like a school school. Like math, science, yeah, reading. Yeah, yeah. Oh. But there's a lot of like outdoor stuff. A lot of uh, learning. Yeah. A lot of things. You know those crazy activities like um, <laughs> that. Uh, was it? Oh, state of Oregon got rid of. You know, reading. The racist ones. You know, like math and shit. But the math, racist ones. math is racist. So now they ain't doing it. So. So anyway, there's a lot of ways to look at this. It's, it's, it's shit all the way around. You can literally take a fan, throw a pile of dog shit at it, and that's exactly what's happened. Yeah. So who knows what the fallout's going to be over the next couple of days, weeks, and even months. I don't want to say you know anything too crazy, but September's coming up around the corner. Mm. We're seeing these videos of uh, a bunch of prisoners and terrorists being released by them. Thousands. Th thousands. Yeah, so not only do you, do you have Taliban, now you got Al-Qaeda and ISIS and all that. Who have been locked away for a long time. And here's, here's something, too. Not only is it going to be a breeding ground for that type of ideology, right? Extremism. Meanwhile, they call in patriots extremists. But anyway, don't worry about that part. Don't worry about that part. All right? Don't worry about that. So stupid. Don't worry that if you you a COVID denier or you against lockdowns, you're now considered a, a terrorist by the DHS, DHS, right? DHS. Depart Department of Homeland Security. Anyway, <clears throat> so now this all this ideology and stuff is going to spread into Pakistan. All right? That's right next to India. That's one of our allies. So you might see a little bit of friction there. Meanwhile, you got China uh, backing up the Taliban. It comes from China. There you go. Backing up the Taliban. Un Taliban. Mm -hmm. Un vato que se llama Iván. Um, se llama Iván? Un Taliban, way. So now you got China backing up the Taliban. You got the, all that um, terrorism going to spill over into Pakistan. You got a southern border that's wide open. China smells the, the weakness and uh, you know our leadership now they're going to really move into the south china sea where like 75 percent of trade all goes through that sea and they're going to bum rush taiwan while the microchips get made so now you're really going to be waiting for a ford f-150 or a refrigerator a lot longer our our economy and our security national security depends on those microchips we need it for our fucking jets and drones and all types of shit and our economy. We need that. That's like a Silicon Valley of Asia right there. And Trump wanted to bring microchip manufacturing to Arizona. It was a lot of work they were about to do for these next four years. You know what I'm talking about? But uh, it is what it is. You know, he got beat by a landslide. <clears throat> not even close. I'm not going to say allegedly either because I'm not trying to be in a gulag. Somebody sent me something where it was like, how ironic that after the symposium's done, all this is going down in the Middle East. I'm like, I don't know how to tie that together. I guess yeah. you could, you know, tie it together. I don't know somehow. how to tie that together either. Um, but this is another thing you might want to try and tie together. China was meeting up with the Taliban a couple weeks ago. Next thing you know, Biden's like, yeah, man, I don't want to be there no more. And we just going to cut and run. And he was like, you're not going to see 
people getting rescued off of our embassy roof. You're not going to see that. This is not Saigon. This is not the North uh, Vietnamese Army. This apples and oranges. And then helicopters coming in to swoop people up. Dude, the Curb the Enthusiasm music should have been playing that entire time. For this whole... Buckle up. We got three more, three and a half more years. Yeah, but not of him. Let's be real. He's not making it Well, you know, years. La Quemala. La Quemala is going to really... I mean, instead of throwing one pile of shit into a fan, it's going to be two piles of shit. So everybody that call me a sellout, everybody that's like, oh, you're just mad that your papi trompas lost. Oh, yeah, mama lo wey, ponle casa. Damn, fool, you love Trump, fool. Buckle up. You got three and a half more years of all this. So inflation is at all time high. They screwing you with the gas pump. The Taliban just ran off with $80 billion of weapons, drones, Humvees, tanks, jets of your taxpayer dollars. You got all these people, man, that, that put in work over there. They got PTSD. These people just cut and run. It was a botched exit. No kind of negotiation. No kind of planning. No kind of nothing. Congratulations. You played yourself. I guess we all played ourselves, huh? I mean, 81 it's the was Americans' a, money. That too, but 81 million people really played themselves because they're like, they didn't like all this peace we had for four years, bro. We had all that peace. We had all in peace treaties. Uh, the only dude got out of line, Solomon A and uh, Ali Baghdadi. Turn that boy into motherfucking guacamole. Yeah, I think that's what everybody can agree on that had Trump been in office, that's probably what would have happened. Like, we would have just gangster shit. Just sent it in, let him fly. Trump would have went in by himself. He, him and Tim Kennedy. <laughs> Trump would have been in on the uh, on the helicopter, putting that black stuff up under his eyes, like fucking Rambo. Yeah, we're gonna fuck <laughs> you up worse than anyone's ever been fucked up before. You're gonna what is he say? Gonna erase him from the planet, from the face of this earth? Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be a swift, brutal. Remember when they were making fun of him when he was uh, saying Abu Ali Baghdadi. Yeah, yeah. He died like a dog. And it's Dude. like, he ran, he told a visual story. It was visual persuasion. It was deterrent, right? He's like, hunted down by a beautiful dog, a beautiful dog. And then he gave the dog the medal, and it just turned into memes. And you got punk-ass Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel, these, these compromised propagandists just making fun. But now, look, y'all giving Biden the longest honeymoon. The media don't know how. To address this, they're like, well, he, um, you know, uh, uh, it, they were mostly peaceful Taliban. You know, they were they were screaming death to America, but they were friendly while doing it. Oh, can we talk about that a little bit? That lady that's there, the reporter, Ward, I think is her last name. I think it was like Cassie something. Something, yeah. uh, Ward, I believe is Same what one. it is. Um, she's just kind of strolling up in there. Like nothing. Mostly peaceful. They're, you're saying death to America, but also, you know, they seem nice. And she's like, and people are asking them for, for photos. And, you know, they told me to step aside because I'm a woman. The funniest meme about that is they showed. Sunday, think, Monday. Yeah, I think, it's, <laughs> I think her name is Cassie Ward. Uh, we got to post the meme on, a, on the at what did he said page. But <laughs> it's a left and a right. It's like yesterday and today. And basically the, the little caption, the, uh, the lower third says Taliban is surrounding they're slowly taking over the country, right? right? And she still has her hair out. And then to the right, it's like Taliban is in Kabul and they about to lock down. The, they getting their country back, y'all. They getting their country back. And now she got to have all her shit covered. All you see is her little eyes and shit. And it's like, yeah, bitch. Dude. Yeah, bitch. They ain't playing around. And also, I mean, I've seen other videos of her like interview, interviewing them pretty extensively. Oh, they had a PR, bro. They did more press conferences than Biden. How does that work, though? When people are literally running, like, for their lives, you have this CNN reporter and a CNN team just interviewing Taliban members. Man, there's some crazy shit on TikTok. Dude. It is just People all... keep finding... Go ahead. No, I'm just... Uh, no, I just gotta say, it's all so... It's just... It's, it's, it's sketchy is like the least word. I can't think of another word. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dude. TikTok is like, you don't be knowing what's conspiracy. Some of the shit be so fake. But they keep finding, you know how they keep finding uh, when they were doing that fake ass commission, the insurrection commission where they all there crying, Choose all the cops. your words wisely, Chingo. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what do you call it? The something, com the, the one six the commission. The one six commission. All right. I mean, damn, y'all doing it. I can't talk about it. Jesus Christ. Fucking big tech. Anyway, uh, we need a rumble page, y'all. We got to get on rumble. Um. <laughs> During the commission, uh, people on TikTok kept grabbing stills 
of one of the officers that had like the neck tattoo and a beard right and then they kept comparing him to this other dude but it turns out it wasn't him right it was super fake but they really did look similar now they're finding these like white boy looking dudes that are supposedly taliban and they're comparing it to the other same white boy looking dude that's in the damn capital on one <laughs> six what? so it's like whoa they're like zooming in it's like same beard same face same everything and it's like you telling me this dude is taliban but he also was in the thing and you know i've heard of crisis actors i've heard of psyops i've heard of a lot of stuff but um i can't call it i don't know uh, you know now that you say that i actually saw a similar tiktok where the guy they had a really close uh, a really close up of his face and it was like it was like super zoomed in that it was kind of blurry mm -hmm. but it was also comparing to somebody that was you know in the middle east or whatever and it's just like is it possible <laughs> that they're the same people does your does your mind play tricks on you? Do you like kind yeah, of? Yeah, no, your mind definitely can play tricks on you. Absolutely, it can. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's really Taliban, and they really did take over. And the I guess a lot of the Afghanistan troops and fighters that America had invested in and tried to train. There's videos of them like trying to do jumping jacks, and they. Can't, I thought that was fake. They dude. can't do a jumping jack. Maybe it is fake. But but the truth of the matter, regardless of that, the truth of the matter is. Afghanistan isn't a nation how you would think. It's 52 tribes. Exactly. So a lot of folks are not going to just buck up to the Taliban. That's why they just ran through that bitch and, and Toyota Corollas and little uh, Ford Festivas and shit. <laughs> Broken H hanging, down. Yeah, hanging out of trunks and shit. These are illiterate goat herders, bro. Dude, it, it's such an embarrassment when you put it like that, right? They're illiterate goat herders. Do you see them working out in the gym in the embassy? No. The video of them working out. You no, didn't see it? No. Oh, bro. But hey, but guess what? Let, let me say this. I did see them in their the Afghani White House or whatever you would call it, right? So they were in that bitch. It looked like a rap cover. Yeah. It looked like the insurrection boys. It takes a nation of trillions to hold us back. That's what it looked like. The, that was a real insurrection. A real insurrection is when you go up in there with weapons and, and you 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 doing what you got to do. The other shit was a photo op. It's yeah. cam, it's more cameras than anything. Yeah. The scariest shit there is a buffalo hat and zip ties. But anyway, y'all can fall for the okie doke if y'all want. Keep calling me a sellout. But you got another three and a half years of this bullshit. And they are running the the U.S. dollar off a cliff. They squeezing you, the middle class. All this shit falls back on you. They doing it to you right in front of your face, and you got to fucking pay for it. But keep calling me a sellout. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, that's a clip. Somebody clip that. Oh, yeah, that someone's going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make that into a clip. Uh, okay. Those are doing really well on Instagram, everybody. Can I, can I say yours? Thank um, y'all for the support. At what did he said? Everybody follow, share. And for some reason, I feel like they do better on that page than on mine. A thousand percent. Why? I don't understand it. Like these, all these reels, and they're like anywhere from ten to maybe thirty seconds, sixty at most, right? It'll start off slow. It'll be like one to two hundred views in like six to twelve hours, and then all of a sudden, boom, five, six, t seven, ten thousand views. I'm like, okay, so I'd rather later than never, right? But on your page, it's really suppressed, like. It's it, it takes a hot it, it I'm gonna have to do some fucking real research as what it is that Instagram wants so we can try to do that. I actually have it up and I know this is totally inside baseball, but when it comes to like what creators should do on Instagram, uh -huh. Instagram tells you like there's they, they have blogs and articles on Instagram.com about what the algorithms require. And I'll just leave you with this and then we get back to our topics because mm -hmm. a lot of people are I know content creators that listen, or mm -hmm. at least they wanna be. Okay, yeah. Every one of Instagram's aspects has its own algorithm. There's not just one Instagram algorithm. There's an algorithm for your post, one for your explore feed, one for your reels, one for your IGTVs. And you have to actually take the time out of your day to parse out all the information about how to perfect each one of those things. So if you wanna do, like you wanna be a really good short uh, time kind of content creator like the, the reels, Research just reels. If you want to, you know, be a photographer, real, uh, you know, research the post so you can know how to post right. It's all kinds of shit, man. Big tags just gotta, they don't make it easy. Man, I'm I'm so glad you're doing all that research, brother. Um, you know, it's it's like a whole other job. You're yeah. having to, you're having to play researcher. But look, man, we're in it to win it. Yeah, I, I'm I'm trying to do three thousand sold out venues as well, <laughs> uh, like like Schultz Um But yeah, man, you know, we, it's so crazy how I guess social media plays such a big role, yet 
the powers in their court. Like they can they can choose what they want to trend. They can suppress what they want to suppress. And you know, but we appreciate you guys, man. You yeah, know, everybody that tunes <clears throat> in, spreads the word, shares the clips, and nothing comes quick, right? Like all the podcasters and people that you know, like anyone from you know uh, Chrissy D, Chrissy De Stefano, Tim mm-hmm. Dillon, Schultz, all these people have been podcasting for five, six, seven years. Like Tim Dillon was doing it in a tiny room with Ray Kump, another a comedian from New York, for years together, and then he broke away, moved to LA, did his own show, and that took off after like six or seven years of podcasting, right? Mm-hmm. So this mm-hmm. had it. The RPT and what you, what we're doing had it even harder because you're going against the grain of the type of content that we know Big Tech wants, right? Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's not advertiser friendly when you talk about. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> wow, yeah, shit. it's not advertiser friendly. It's not uh, the type of things you should actually say, right? Mm-hmm. Quote unquote, because it's you need to self censor a little bit. But because of the TIA and people that listen, the Patreon's taken off, the podcast is taken off, the clips and content are taken off. So it's kind of like it's cool to see that the people are rallying behind it and helping it when Big Tech won't help, you know, spread it. It's all about the people, man. Uh, by any means necessary, we will get the word out. So, yee. again, thank you guys so much. Yee yee. Yay, yay. The country way is yee yee. Yee yee. <laughs> okay, I'm going to practice that because I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Uh, dude, what's on the list today? What's next? We have Newsom Recall is underway and new surveys show that 52% of likely voters want Newsom to stay in Can office. Can you believe that? That's from the Hill. That's from the Hill. <laughs> While 48% believe he should be ousted. Wow. wow. And I've had people like uh, Hop Society and a couple other Cali, what do you call What do they call themselves? Cali, whatever. Californians? Cali- yeah. Uh-huh. Californians who got their mail-in ballots and they're filling it out. You know, For the recall. For the recall. So I don't know if you have, you don't have to, obviously, right? There's got to be somewhere you can go, but they've sent out all these melon ballots, uh-huh. which they're allowing, and uh, we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. So Newsom, is he using the uh, Beatles as an excuse? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? Yo, um, I, I, this is off subject, but uh, Jadakiss has a rhyme where he says, why they let the Terminator win the election? And then he said, why, why they let Bush knock, knock down the Oh, it rhymes with powers. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm wondering if that song has gotten censored. It's crazy. Huh. It's crazy how you could have said shit prior. Now everything's like, why are you being all political, Chingo? Bitch, the world is political, you idiot. It is, you know, and it's kind of unfortunate too because you remember people saying that once Trump's out of office, everything's going to be less politicized. I feel like it's heightened somehow. It's because everything's become more politicized in the last six months. Do you, would you agree? Do you think it's it's calmed down? Well, I, I would agree only because a lot of the stuff that they're trying to usher in, you know, we, we've been polarized. Um, Michael Berry made an excellent point. He said, when we were attacked on 9-11, am I still allowed to say that? Is that a fucking bleep <laughs> word? Um, when we were attacked on 9-11, instead of us f- falling and being divided and them winning and them, you know, kicking our ass psychologically, whatever, we came together. We came together as one. We were unified. We were on the same team. It was Team America. Now, they sprinkle a little Beatles on us, and then the media does their fucking thing, and now we're at each other's throats. We're not, we're super divided. We're not unified at all. Like, we've never been this damn polarized and divided. So, instead of flying them things into them buildings, all they had to do was sprinkle a little bit of Vitus, mm-hmm. and we'd have been super divided and fucking checkmate. So, you know, uh, you know, the smart people that are attacking us, they understand they need to control social media, they need to have their own platform over here. You know the one that Trump wanted to um Forced them to sell to an American company. You you know that crazy orange hair guy was like this is a national security threat. Well, anyway, they can make what they want. They, they can shape the narrative. And then you have bots. And then you have phony-ass media. Dude, sorry to interrupt you. you. Somebody commented something on your Facebook page. What they say? And your reply was, they don't know that's a bot. Uh-huh. <laughs> that was so funny. Were they bots? Well, it was... They, I thought, sounded like a bot. Dude, whatever... Sc- they, they, they posted a screenshot, right? Uh, yeah. And you were like, they don't know that's a bot with a finger pointing up? Yeah. It was like a fake avatar with like an, a stapler on the desk and then some stupid like misspelled, you know... Yeah, like it, it's somebody in Cambodia somewhere. Yeah. They got like 50 cell phones taped to some plywood. You seen that video? Uh huh. It's crazy. Yeah. I've been knowing about that since since um like Takashi Six Nine music like a few years ago where 
the farming yeah the, the, where, the where farming. yeah the streams where basically ariana grande or somebody could just be like i want a million streams by tomorrow yep. okay that's gonna cost you about 20 grand yep. or whatever and it's like that's the money you were gonna make anyway off of those streams yeah <laughs> but now you're fucking trending and now you got that on your resume crazy fake ass shit uh, anyway to my people of california Please let us know why y'all think Newsom is doing a good job, because I don't see it. Yeah, we got to remember what Chef Gruel said, remember? That despite, what did he say exactly? Despite what... He said they just wanted to punk him. They that's want, what it they was, They really yeah. want him out. Yeah, so over 50% of the people are going to vote for the no on the... So that's two questions, right? Yes or no, recall him. Second question, who do you want to replace him? He said on that first question, over 50% of the people aren't going to say yes. They're just, they want to scare him. They want to intimidate him, so... Again, I mean, it's the game, I guess. I mean, y'all don't like Larry Elder. I mean, are y'all not open? He's in the lead, obviously. <clears throat> in the lead, if he if if yeah, yeah. is recalled, yeah, correct. That's what I mean. As an, he, as an opponent, he might just stay in. But um, I mean, are y'all? It's all the Democrats out there in California. Are y'all not open to the idea of having a Republican? You know what I'm saying? Y'all not open to it? Doesn't seem like it. <laughs> I've always said that um, I've always said that the Democrat Party has had a stronghold on California. Like, um, you know, you got these big urban areas. The Republican Party? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Democrats. Okay. The Democrats have really had L.A. County on lock. Big, you know, San Francisco. Um, why you think you see motherfuckers are soft on crime? These district attorneys and shit. Like, there's no penalties for living on a sidewalk. There's no penalties for running out of a Walgreens or a CVS with $950 worth of shit. So now you got all the homeless people from all over America saying, bitch, I'm going to live in Malibu, some goddamn where, uh, Venice Beach. You know, people out here trying to eat outside patio because, you know, not that long ago, that's the only style of dining you were able to have. So you trying to eat in Venice Beach on a sidewalk somewhere, Santa Monica, and you trying to look at the fucking ocean. Is number ten. Why? Democrats. Dude, and it wasn't until that it wasn't that long ago, right? That Cali was red. With the governor. Even yeah. Perhaps. Yeah, yeah that. Any, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do the rest of the episode of Swords and You sound like you had peanut butter stuck in the roof of your mouth. Ah. <laughs> I don't know. It was like a, but I think back in the eighties too, like maybe it was like the late. Reagan. Yeah, it might have been like Wait, 80s. was Reagan the governor? No, no, no. But it wasn't that long ago, actually, that, there, that it was completely reversed. So I don't know what happened, what you know, time period that things just completely shifted. And now it's been blue for fucking decades. So I guess the reason I bring that up is like, I mean, California is great. We were we were scheduled to live there for 25 percent of 2020, yeah. like three months. We were going to be out there for a whole quarter. And then that's when I started to open my eyes. I mean, I didn't have the option to live out there because tour was shut down. I had no business being there, being at an Airbnb, quarantining for three months, not working. <laughs> that just was not possible. That's going to send you to the po house. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we, we got love for Cali, the people, the culture, the weather, the women, the weed, all that. All that. Uh, but este, I don't know why more folks don't see the shit show, which is Gavin Newsom. Yeah. And just, you know, crime. Like I was saying, man, the Democrats, it's like the teachers' unions, the public schools. I don't know how they brainwash people so early, mm -hmm. but that whole narrative that Republicans don't care about you, they're old, white, and greedy, which a lot of them are. Some of them are. You know, you got old, white, greedy Democrats too. But anyway, the narrative is they don't care about you. You know, they want closed borders and this and that, which for the most part, they do want strong borders. So it's not necessarily racist. But they got all the brown people brainwashed that somehow, some way, their their policies and all that, like, they <clears> just <throat> do a better job. Let me read you this real quick. So, uh, shout out Naranja Dulce, who is also a part of the, the Patreon, the TIA. For sure. Send me a, a screenshot from this page. I won't even give him credit, but it's a big Rasa type of page. Oh, okay. And uh, they posted a question, and the question was, how is... That thing sucks, huh? It always goes down. It's because it's, it, yeah, my, my, I probably have a weak grip yeah. and I'm trying to tighten this, but we're going. It's uh, good now. How is Biden doing was the question, right? So, Man, you got to tell me what page is. Is it a bad page? Is no, it, I don't know. Who is it? Uh, it's no mamas, bro. Just okay, I don't even know who that is. Okay, it's just, it's kind of a big-ish. What know? were the results? Uh, I'm going to read some of them to you, okay? Uh, let's see. It was just a screenshot of some of the responses. So he helped low-income families by increasing the tile tax credit. Okay. 
Uh, I'm so more, more socialism. Yes, go on. I'm so happy El Ridículo Payaso de Trompas is not in office anymore. Okay. All right. Uh, whoops. Pararon todo lo de... They didn't even spell immigration, right? Okay. They spelled it in, in immigration. Uh-huh. Well, some people say, yeah, anyway, immigration. Okay. Yeah. So he, he stopped that. Pararon toda la immigration. What does that mean? Like deportations? Yeah. Not true. Not true. I mean, he'd been deport, deporting people too. Biden, you're saying? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's been deporting people too. Obviously not. This I mean, the border's open. Yeah. But a lot of people got deported already. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was just a lot of that. That's honestly most of them what they it's were. It's like, well, you must not be a citizen then. You know what I'm saying? Whoever left that comment. He living, he living his best life. Screw the world. It can wait. So basically, they all think Biden's doing a good job. I mean, isn't that what it sounds like? He's not Trump. It was another response. <sighs> but keep reading some, please. Please. Uh, <laughs> there's one. He shits his diapers. Um, not as bad as it seems. He's better than the alternative. Ah. <sighs> uh, that's i mean i'm not gonna be vindicated but, until, but, you know like three these, more years these are all the responses from the and most of them i would say like 95 percent of them are just they think but man can't i don't know if, i'll look it up i was gonna say send me the fucking page but let me go to it what a shame what a shame I may, you know what maybe i have biden derangement syndrome maybe i, I have cognitive bias mm-hmm. maybe i've been blinded and this man is very capable he speaks clearly he reads a teleprompter immensely well um maybe our economy is doing better than ever and i just don't fucking see it <laughs> right maybe well that's what i felt when i was watching crystal and sagar because you want to try to keep an open mind right and as you're feeling a, a certain way maybe you just saw tim kennedy you know do a live and you saw dan crenshaw and maybe you saw something on prager you and then you see the crystal and sagar approach which is as they try to be is very down the middle right give everybody the credit and give everybody the fault when when they deserve it mm-hmm. but when you're watching it and I'm guilty of it. You feel a certain kind of way, right? When mm-hmm. you hear Crystal sucking off his old PP so hard, and you're like, maybe you should go ahead, finish. Well, is that you know? Then you think to yourself, is it? Was it the best approach right now? The way it was already designed. Like, had they gone back on their word to evacuate, would they have just started shooting people anyway? Like, you know. So you want to question some of that? I'd argue that she does not know what she's talking about on this subject. I, I mean, um, I agree with you. Maybe she has not have time had time to really do a deep dive on like military strategy like could it have been is it considered botched if so why was it botched why was it a botched exit um what was how was trump's strategy going to be different than this maybe the fact that he gave the taliban a heads up as to like for symbolic purposes we're going to be out by september you know what Mm -hmm. i'm saying like you gave them a few months heads up like I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Crystal, what's her name? Crystal what? Ball. Yeah, Crystal Ball, uh, Boo Boo, you might have to do a little bit more homework. <laughs> um, you know. But I, I, I can expect that from CNN. Yeah. Which, of course, they've been, I mean, they've obviously been. Oh, he, he owned it. Uh, excellent <laughs> yeah. speech. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you read that, though, and you're like, ah, what? how much truth does that hold, you know? And, and why is it that you do see people who serve the military that say, you know, it doesn't seem right, but I agree with the way that we withdrew. I'm like, wow. The way we withdrew? Yeah. Oh, my God. In that manner? Like, people having to get rescued off of rooftops? <sighs> Bro, let, let, let's factor this in as well. I think this is a big variable. The way the Biden regime went about it is this. They're putting up pride flags, right? That's what they worried about. Mm. They worried about that. They worried about those optics. They're putting up pride flags on the flagpole under the U.S. flag over at our embassy in fucking Afghanistan, right? Where women can't even show their ankles or face or nothing like that. Nothing. None of that. Um, so would, would, would the Trump regime have been doing stuff like that that's number one number two would how would the trump regime have dealt with it knowing that china was over there am i even allowed to say countries names on big tech we'll find Um, out fuck it this come you know this country let it fly this country i don't know who i'm talking about um if trump saw like okay they're having meetings over there they want their they want to mine their minerals they want some of their resources they want to be in position God forbid we start getting attacked by proxy, mm-hmm. meaning, oh, it seems the Taliban did that to you. Really, bitch? Was it? Was it? Or was it really you with their help? Or you just, they're the crash dummies that you're just, huh, 
Oh, no, that bug, uh, that virus arrived at your shores on its own. It happened naturally. Oh, that, that was Taliban. It's like somebody throwing rocks at you. And you know who it is. But it's like, that wasn't me. <laughs> anyway, my point is, the vi- the, those are the variables. The variables are that you got your woke General Milley, yeah. which I believe he was a Trump appointee. But you got woke General Milley worrying about white rage and, and bullshit like that. Meanwhile, look at this shit show in Afghanistan. You have other countries now meddling, right? That's been the thing. That's nothing new. Russia used to always try to be all in the mix over there. So that's another variable. So it's kind of hard to compare like how Trump would have exited mm. because what I'm hearing is he had conditions. It would have been conditions based, not just cut and run. Mm-hmm. So, you know. And we'll, we'll hear more about that, I'm sure, as days go on. But that's one of my concerns, man. One of my concerns, and actually a patron told me this at one of the pop-ups. Mm. We were just chit-chatting and he's ex-military and he speaks like several languages and all that. And I, I believe he was deployed out there several times. And he said, hey, man, that border can't be like that. He's like, he's like Central American. Like, so he immigrated. Mm. Like, he wasn't even born here. Wow. He's like, hey, man, that border can't just be like that because he said it's real easy for Mohammed, somebody, you know, that's the name he used, uh, to be like, hey, my name is Julio, <laughs> right? And sneak on up in. And he even said this. He said, what if they decide to just ingest a little smallpox? Or ingest a little black plague or, or whatever. Just something that we, we don't have inoculation for. And just walk right through the fucking McAllen border. Over there by Westlock or Mission, Texas somewhere. And <laughs> get the coughing everywhere. Yeah. Boom. Now you got another situation. Basically, it's global destabilization. And another one of my concerns is getting attacked by proxy. So in other words, you got this Pers- this country that's not an ally they're kind of a a, a a rival and they over there investing in their infrastructure they over there in cahoots and before you know it you might see some shit pop off i mean it seems like that's the direction it's going you know and it's crazy how it's such a i mean for lack of a better phrase shithole of a place but it's so rich in minerals and rubies and what, they, what do they have over there i mean what don't they have honestly you name what? it you name it they have it diamonds yep Ooh. rubies, lithium, gold. Damn. All I mean, all the precious metals you uh, could possibly ever need. Uh, and why is it... The poppy fields. <laughs> yeah, we know they got that. Opiates. Uh-huh. Actually, I had a list pulled up uh, here. Let's see if I can find it real quick. And then I'll, I'll give you some a quick... Uh, oh, lithium for batteries. Yeah, of course. So, um, what a coincidence that this green new fucking deal, this green new bullshit, they call it an infrastructure deal, $3.5 trillion, I believe, there's some shit in there where they want us all to go <clears throat> electric vehicle, which is only going to send more jobs to China. So Afghanistan has a vast reserve of gold, platinum, silver, copper, iron, chromite, lithium, uranium, aluminum, and that's not even counting, you know, the rubies and gems and such. A la madre. Well, yeah. And not only that. They got oil. It's also, and you said oil too? And of course. And it's also profitable from the, from the uh, weapons, war, the military industrial complex, and government contracts like oh sorry we blew up 10 buildings uh the other day uh guess i'm gonna need a government contract me and my homies the cronies yeah give me about 150 million or something of y'all's money and we're gonna go do some construction over there and that was one of the main things a lot of these people like crystal and saga were talking about is that the generals are to blame for the bad intel they've basically been lying to the american people for 20 years these people weren't capable of defending themselves they couldn't do anything right they couldn't defend anything much less their entire country and then also they're all multimillionaires. you know all these generals are multimillionaires who continuously want to stay there so that they can continue how, how do they make their multi-millions these government contracts so a contract to be a general? A contract to be somebody who, from what I understand... Like a deployment? Like a like in charge of the infrastructure there, the, in charge of the rebuilding. Like the, We always hear about uh, bad spending, right? Misspending. There were reports of you know the military spending $600 on one screw, on wow. a screw for shit, shit like that, right? So Taxpayer dollars. And the way that California misspends on the homeless, they have whatever their budget was that we found out recently that Rogan was talking to Colin Noir about. It was in the, it was in the tens of millions or maybe a hundred million or something like that. And it's just like, 
why is everybody homeless and where's all that money? Well, it's the people that run the organizations, right? Yeah. Same thing with the generals, unfortunately. It's like, don't really fix it. Just stay there and get your bread. Yeah, that's why year after year, and they use every example. This happened with Bush. This happened with Obama. Obama, you know, wanted to get out. They they tricked him in a sense to stay there. Same thing happened with Trump. And then he said he was going to get out, you know, towards the end of his presidency. And they wanted to do the same thing apparently with Biden. And then... The, he, they, the military thought that they were going to crumble under the, the pressure to stay there. Otherwise, this was going to happen. I guess it kind of gave him some order of a warning. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, we're going to leave anyway. And they didn't think they were actually going to pull out. And they didn't think they were going to take it over in a couple hours. No, but they knew it was going to happen. I think they said it was going to take like months. six months. Yeah, yeah, they thought it would take months. But nah, these motherfuckers pulled up in the trunk of a Corolla yeah. with a little Uzi and shit. And here's another thing. When Bush started all this 20 years ago, because of 9-11... Can we still say that, Big Tech? Am I allowed to say that? Um, now you have youngsters out there fighting. Yeah. They weren't even born when the, when, the, when the Twin Towers. They weren't even born. And they out there. Their daddy was there. The uncle was there. And now they are there. Yeah. Sorry, I punched the shit out of my paper. <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyway, Sydney, Australia residents face a $3,700 fine under new virus lockdown rules. And that's what happens when you let China all up in your country. Australia it has, they done had Australia by the nuts. Bad. Even in trade. Like they would, um, commodities and shit that Australia was sending to China, they would just punish them all the time. Like, oh, you're not behaving how we want. Boom, we ain't buying no more of that lumber. Boom, we ain't buying no more of this and that. Speaking of officials, um, this was just happening right now as we were recording. Harris County Judge Linda Hidalgo, or Lena Hidalgo, your favorite, Chingo. Comrade um, Lena Hidalgo. Comrade announces a new $100 COVID-19 vaccine initiative, incentive initiative. So you get $100, go get the jab? Get $100 to get, a, <laughs> to get the jab. In order to get the $100, people will need to sign a waiver prior to getting the vaccine and will need to stay in the post-vaccine waiting area for 15 to 30 minutes after receiving the vaccine, Hidalgo said. The judge also encourages people to use those $100 to help small businesses. <laughs> the judge, oh, her. Her. Let's keep this in mind next year, everybody, because we're ste we're definitely going to keep. Podcasting. I mean, you know, we're definitely going to keep growing. Are they using uh, the dumb onion machines? They didn't use them here. I don't okay. think. Okay, all right, just checking. I'm pretty sure they did. Just yeah. checking what kind of you know. Yeah, I think that was a whole. I would think that was a Texas white thing. I don't think they used them here. Mm. No archaic machines. Okay, that the Democrats warned us about in 2018. Those compilations are pretty creepy yeah. too. Yeah, Russia, Russia, Russia. Wind wind wind, 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 wind. Like when the freeze hit, man, I ain't know what to blame. I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm Rob. Who should I be mad at, man? What, what, what did it, man? Ain't no sun. I'm cold as shit. Cause ain't no sun. What's is it? The solar panels. Who did this shit? Jingo was like, I'm not supposed to see my breath in my living room. <sighs> Some bullshit. Yo. If you hopped on Twitter, you're supposed to be mad at Ted Cruz, though. Obviously. Yeah. According to Twitter. Yeah. Of course. Cause Cancun. Of course. All right. Cause according, you know, cause senators. You know, he's you gonna, know. he should have lassoed the sun closer to we us. We needed him to climb up the light pole and <laughs> wrangle down some heat. But anyway, Australia, you played yourself. Congratulations. That's what happens when you let other countries come and buy out your politicians. And, you know, hey, let's not turn this into the United States of China. China. New Zealand goes back into full lockdown after one case of the vid was reported complete one lockdown. case not even a, a death it's a case yep hmm um full lockdown i wonder what full lockdown entails don't go outside don't talk to your neighbor you'll be fined wow yeah they're gonna fly a drone over your motherfucking house they are doing that they're flying real i mean we've seen some of those videos i don't know how intense it's about to get now that they're back in a full lockdown and apparently they don't see it uh, lifting at the end of this month like they said it's probably going to go into september october I mean, they're an island, and I understand, like, they want to probably keep a tight lid on um, anything like that going in there. But at some point, it's like, I mean, do y'all still have air travel? I don't think they do. I don't think you can get in. Like, at all? I mean, no, I mean, like, period. Like, do they not need that for commerce? Like, we're going to go Game of Thrones style, just go on boats. I mean, yeah. Like, do they, I mean, do they not do trade? I mean, do they not have a port? With China, I think. <laughs> there you go i think honestly all roads lead back i'm pretty sure i'll look it up i'll look it up i mean i'm just saying like how can you realistically lock down all your citizens i wonder if they're going to do the passports how do you realistically lock down everybody 
if you still got flights was that new zealand or australia right now it says new zealand okay. goes back in a full lockdown okay, okay. um if you still have flights if you still have a port uh if you still have trade if you still got people coming and going in other words it's just gonna be an endemic ain't no way around it these people made it in the lab and it's, it's just it's gonna be there in 2017, New Zealand's major trading partner countries were exports, for exports were China, Australia, and then the U.S. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Weekend violence in Chicago, the Windy City, leaves five dead at 47 shot. It's an average weekend in Chicago, in the Shy, the Dude, Chirac. I feel so bad for people that are going through some of that stuff there. Uh, it's mainly on the south side. Well, you know what I'm saying. And I feel bad. Yeah, the cops. Uh, I read the article where cops were turning their back to the mayor. I think she went to go visit somebody in the hospital. Mm, yeah. Uh, like yeah. an officer in the, in the hospital, I want to say. Yeah. Yeah. But she also didn't allow... Uh, there was, I, I don't remember all the details, but like they were going to do a bagpipe procession for the fallen oh, okay. officer. Okay. She supposed, allegedly, she was like, we ain't got time for that shit. Or she was like, nah, because COVID, we can't do all that. She just had Lollapalooza. I read that. She over there with Dave Chappelle and shit. They got a super spread event happening. But, uh, you know, she's trash. She's a trash-ass mayor. The mom, um, the, the, Democrat. Since we're on the subject, the mom of the kid who shot that uh, cop, did she, you, she ran up in the hospital. Did you see that video? I saw, like, a piece, and I, it was annoying. It was super annoying. You're right. So she was like, ah, let me see my babies. Right? She starts the video in her car, talking all kinds like, of like... I'm about to go up in there. Well, yeah, but she was like, uh, you don't believe everything you read and see online. Like, my boys are not monsters, this, that, and the other. And then, she, then cut to, it's her running into the fucking hospital. Like, I want to see whoever. And she gets, you know... Not very effective. It was just ridiculous. If you want to, if you're trying to barge into a hospital and you're trying to see somebody, you're gonna have to smooth talk. You're gonna have to do some shit. Like have maybe a, show some ID. Something, a fake wristband, right? You don't need that to vote. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's some clown ass shit, man. Chicago, we're praying for y'all. We don't know how the culture is gonna change. We don't know how y'all gonna be able to get y'all's uh, city back. Really don't understand. Um, it's really, really tragic. I mean, these, these sound like Afghanistan numbers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, what kind of PTSD people be having living out there in the, in the shy? All right, here we go. What is this? Governor DeSantis? Yeah. Uh, this is him talking about early treatment, right? So what's the hashtag on his podium here? Uh, or, or it's like early treatment. Oh, yeah. he has a, It's on his podium. It says, early treatment saves lives. So it's just a, Here, actually, I'll play it if it's queued up. It's a tweet from The Hill. Yeah. Governor DeSantis. I can read it in the meantime. Let me see. You want to say something? Early treatment with these monoclonal antibodies. Re okay, there it goes. Turn it up. Ken Shefke is the chief medical officer for Florida Division of Emergency Management. Also have Representative True now here, uh, which we're very, uh, very excited that he's uh, here as well. Um, you know, we've... Uh, uh, really, I think, identified over the last couple of weeks uh, one thing that, that just wasn't known enough in terms of uh, what do you do, you know, upon getting a positive test of COVID-19 and basically early treatment with these monoclonal antibodies, Regeneron and others, uh, have proven to radically reduce the chance that somebody ends up being hospitalized. And at the end of the day, you know, reducing hospital admissions uh, is has got to be a top priority. And if you reduce those admissions, people don't go to the hospital to begin with. You know, they're going to recover, and so that's a really important thing. What? Yeah. So I got the camera over here. I think Shingo's cold. <laughs> keep the remote by me. Oh, that's cool. No. So um, that's kind of what the story was about, right? But look at the tweets. Look at the tweets underneath there. It says, uh, "Why not just get vaccinated?" Uh, and someone says, you know what else reduces your chances of being hospitalized? The vaccine. Someone said, holy shit, how does this guy sleep at night? <laughs> so basically, he's just promoting treatments like mm -hmm. Regeneron, mm -hmm. which is going to reduce... The um, amount of hospitalizations. Yeah. Hypothetically, right? Yeah. So with these idiot bots, what they're not factoring in is that what side effects have you heard from Regeneron? Like, have you heard people having all kind of fucking twitches and shit now due to the... Uh, Regeneron versus how experimental mm. it's not fully approved there's a lot of side effects you know infl was, inflammation of the heart and right. fucking blood clots and or, all types of shit yeah heart attacks and strokes you know being on the list uh tim Dillon had it you know he's been vaxxed 
right? So he went and got his, I believe he got Regeneron. He got the, whatever cocktail Trump got. Yes, and what happened? He feels great. I listened to the Patreon exclusive this morning. He's like, bro, what is Regeneron? I don't even know. It's like a steroid or something? Because look, man, my boy Steve-O, mm-hmm. um, he produced Freedom, right? Mm-hmm. He just caught the, the Delta 8. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> promo code. <laughs> Shellshockcbd.com. Promo code Chingo. Get 10% off. I need to start saying it at the top of the show. Sorry, Shellshock. My bad. Um, we'll factor it in. Steve-O caught the Rona. And he's like, bro, I felt kind of crappy for a day or two. I went and got a hit of that Regeneron. He's like, man, I'm out here doing pull-ups. He's like, I am not tripping. He's like, I feel... He's like, he said it like Trump. He said, uh, he said, I feel better than I did before. Mm. He said, people thought Trump was full of shit. He said, they thought Trump was bullshitting when he was like, I feel great. I feel amazing. I feel excellent. They were like, he's just saying that because he's Hitler. Because he, he's white supremacy. And he's like, nah, bro. He's like, that Regeneron is the truth. Well, you know what? Shout out. We got to mention this real quick. Gabe, uh, he has a relative who's not doing so well. Oh, no. Like in the ICU, I believe, oh, on a ventilator. And his mom's like, you need to get it. And Gabe's having that inner, you know, that inner dialogue that he doesn't want to. He needs to play her to DeSantis clip. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but, uh, you know, and I said the same thing kind of that we said to, who was it? Was it Luis, I believe, last yeah. week that submitted a question that, you know, if you are able to go out outside, get the sun, take your vitamins, do the, the preventative stuff, it, you're probably in a better boat. But the relative that he's referring to works in an office, doesn't get very much sun, always inside, not very active. Big difference. Big difference in lifestyle. Get, meanwhile, Gabe's like, yeah, I take my, I've been taking my vitamins for years. You know, he obviously works with his hands. He, he moves around. He's yeah. outside. He, he, he you know, cooks. He's, he's living a different lifestyle. Yeah. So it's, it's unfortunate, but those will have a factor. They'll, they'll probably play a factor if you get it. Uh, Gabe, don't let your mama punk you, bro. <laughs> I've been there before. I got two older sisters, one's 10 years older, one's 13 years older. And uh, yeah, man, tell her about Regeneron. Tell her it's apples and oranges. I'm not my relative. Yeah. And I'd rather take my chance. Look here, man. My mom just got back from Mexico. I sent her the list of what meds I'm going to have just in case. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we prayed up, AK'd up, <laughs> ivermectin up. I'm going to have to bring the stack of stuff. I told you last week. I totally forgot. Um, it's probably about eight or nine capsules that I take daily. It's all different stuff. I'll make a, a list of it and we'll talk about it on yeah, Friday's episode. Yeah, man, send me that list, bro. Yeah, my bad. Because I'm out of my, my multi. Yeah, <laughs> which is all Chingo takes, everybody. Just a multi. And look how healthy it is, like no, a horse. No, I got some multi. <laughs> <laughs> I remember on one episode, I said, yeah, man, I'm Brit like, I said, I'm built like a brick shit house. <laughs> <laughs> Fake news. All lies. <laughs> tall tales. Tall tales. Um, five-star f- athlete. Five-star athlete. Yeah, right. Pinche water boy. <laughs> No, I take I take more than a multi. I got like some other little little one offs, like little fish oil, a little other stuff. <laughs> that, I mean, that's good too. I yeah. take a multi and a fish, and but I'll bring everything else, and we'll talk about it. And then I'll bring the uh, descriptions of what each one of them does, so that I'm not just saying take X Y Z. Like, what the fuck is it? Look, I'll, you should obviously look it up after we talk about it. But at least we'll uh, give we'll the know. list to the patrons first. Yeah. Okay. Full list for the patrons. Yeah, I'll put the list inside the Patreon uh, this afternoon when I put up uh, tomorrow's episode for show. Sure. So, yeah, we're going to pray for uh, New Zealand and uh, also pray for DeSantis, man. I don't know if he's going to be the uh, nominee. Um, you know what I'm it's saying? It's going to be interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. If it's going to be Trompas, if it's going to be DeSantis, if it's going to be Trompas slash DeSantis. I know it ain't going to be Pence. I'll tell you that right now. Him and that fly going to have to go somewhere else. Well, if I have to guess, I would say uh, Rand Paul's going to try to run. Okay. Controversial. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I dig him. I think he makes a ton of sense. But lefties and normies are very terrified of that man they think he's cuckoo <laughs> they really do they're like oh my god he's saying we need to not comply he's he's gonna kill grandma but he has a way of conveying a message that neither he's not even a real doctor i don't <laughs> he is a real doctor actually i don't think trump or DeSantis have a way with explaining things the way Rand paul does right now that might change as we get closer to an action where it matters where your message really needs to get across to the people but that's but just right now. It, it, I'd argue that it's subjective for one to say, you know, I mean, we can try to objectively grade DeSantis style of communication versus Rand Paul. But I will say this. Um, Rand Paul, is he Republican or mm-hmm. what is he? Mm-hmm. He's Republican. Mm-hmm. OK, that R after your name, that's all the lefty got to see. 
That's it. They yeah. think you fucking, you're stupid, you're cuckoo, you're racist, you're a bigot, you're homophobe, you're transphobic, uh, you don't know what you're talking about. And with the, he needs to like bleep out the R after his name. Like, I don't Blur know. Blur it out. I mean, people are, people are really just walking around like some idiots. Like, you see those uh, viral clips of um, the man on the street segments of like, oh, hi, uh, you know, what university? Oh, mm-hmm. I go to this. And do you, are you proud to be an American? You know what I mean? Like yeah. these questions you ask, like, oh, here's a photo of a person. Do you know who that is? And it's like, oh, I don't know who that is. It's like, that's the first lady. That's Joe Biden, you fucking idiot. You know what I mean? Or can you name some good things Biden has done? And they're just like, um, well, there are none, right? So, <laughs> so that's, you know, I can give them that. But these are the same people that are calling me a sellout. They think I'm a white supremacist somehow. They they somehow think Biden's doing a good job. They somehow think Newsom's doing a good job. They're super anti-DeSantis. They think Florida is doing a terrible job. They want vaccine passports. They're like, please govern me harder, daddy. <laughs> That's what they want. They want bigger government. They want the jab. They want the passport. They they want communism. They want they don't know. They're fucking stupid, bro. I agree with you. I totally agree with you. And these are the folks that we're hoping have a brain cell and they're going to take heed to what Rand Paul got to say or DeSantis got to say. I mean, Trompas has his way of speaking. He speaks like a truck driver from Queens. That's why I like it. I love it. I dig it. But, you know. A truck driver from Queens. Yeah, so it's confusing to people. I I can't believe I almost glossed. It's his fucking chair. I need to get Oh, my bad. I thought you was knocking. (laughs) No, uh, we can't gloss over that. A, a truck driver from Queens. The same. DeSantis kind of has a the same semi. You know, it's not as crude. It's it's more correct. Like, you know, he's a, dude. He's an ex um, lawyer, Navy SEAL. He's an, he was he, a, he was a JAG. He's one of them. Like you can't handle the truth. He was like a military okay. Tribune. So mm. basically, this is how cold the United States is, bro. When we send some seals in there to go do it to go pull a stunt, kick yeah. a door, and and bop bop bop. They got the lawyer already ruled with them, with the bag of money, mm. if need be. You know what I'm saying? So they read, what to do? What's up? We, we complying within all um, l- l- rules of engagement. You know what I'm saying? You can't put us through no, um, what's that international law, man? It got to do with war and shit. Um, international law has to do it, with war. It's, it's, uh, there's, a, there's a word for it. Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> This uh, something accord? No, it's not an accord. Um, but it's some shit that you just gets can't ho- let the go the Paris Climate Accord go. Huh? No, it's not Paris Climate Accord. It's I'll look it up later. But it's it's basically some laws that came in after World War II, where basically if we find out where this bug actually how it came about and if it was released on purpose, then that was a violation of, of that law. I know what you're talking. It's on, yeah. dude. Someone, it's on people are yelling time. at their phones. Yeah, right they're now. in their car. <laughs> like, their what cars. the fuck, Chingo? Educate yeah. yourself, sell out. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, it would be very interesting to see what unfolds. And all I was trying to say is this, some Democrat, well, a lot of people are, are, even Republicans, we, we're biased. I mean, I don't identify as Republican, but like the left has lost its mind. So damn near anything the left does, I will admittedly be biased. I'm already looking at it through the filter. <laughs> this is the filter I use. Okay, where does China play a role in this? Yeah. Um, I'm looking at it like, okay, what's the agenda? How is this divisive? And before I forget, I highly, highly recommend you guys look into, um, check this out. It's a dude named Vivek Ramas, Ramas Navi or something like that. I'm fucking up his name. Indian cat, billionaire. He started a biotech company in Silicon Valley, sold that bitch for a couple billy, and he left that cushy lifestyle and decided to speak up, and he wrote a book called Woke Inc., which basically, the cover is super cool because it's got the little Marxist BLM fist, Mm. right? But the fist is holding a wad of cash, and it has a Rolex around his wrist. Basically saying what corporations do is you had the 1%, 99% movement, Occupy Wall Street happening, right? Where basically Wall Street and the fat cats and the elites were just fucking over the little guy, making all this money, not paying their fair share. People were out there protesting, right? The Bernie bros and everybody. And now they basically, wokeism merged with corporate, like capitalism, mm. basically. And they found that, hey, we're Nike. We get our shoes made 
by slave labor, right? Um, we're going to go ahead and just be very woke to fucking dissimular. Like, look over here. Look over here. Look over here. Don't look at the slave labor. Uh-huh. Over here. Apple. All these companies got dirt, right? So what they do is they act woke in public. They donate a little bit here. They do some little charade, a little three-card hat, three card Monty. They basically use the woke shit as a smoke and mirrors play. He said the dangerous thing is this marriage has become a threesome. So now China got in the mix and they said, you know what? A lot of companies want our billion citizen market. A lot at Tesla want to come over here. Apple, everybody wants to come in our market. We're going to let them as long as they talk shit about America and don't talk about what we do. So the wokeism, the Marxism, the, you know, the greedy corporatism and China, all that turned into pinche caca soup <laughs> to where we're divided, we're brainwashed. And it's very interesting. If you go on Fox Nation, he did a whole docu-series thing where he, he, he'll go sit down with Tucker, but then he goes and interviews people and he's explaining and illustrating this merger even at one point tucker like lost his shit like giggling like he's like ha, ha. he's like oh my god i've known this he's like but i've never heard it explained so clearly yeah very good uh, i have not read the book <laughs> great little segment though on fox nation audibletrial.com forward slash red pill tamales for sure audibletrial.com forward slash red pill tamales um, I heard Anthony McCon wasn't Matthew McConaughey's book. I heard oh, was that Anthony, I heard it was Anthony McConaughey's brother. Or? Yeah, Antonio. <laughs> no, I heard it was good. Mateo, Mateo McConaughey. I heard um, his audio book is good. But anyway, audible.com forward slash Red Pill Get your yeah. free trial. Sass. So uh, DeSantis, I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I don't know if he's gonna get the nod. Um, I mean, the way that things are, I way sorry about that. <laughs> the way things are going, I hope that we just see Trump run again, see what happens. By that time, the podcast is going to be huge. It's going to be huge, huge. We will be vindicated. <laughs> Everyone will realize that we're really not sellouts, and we were just trying to ring the alarm about your freedoms and about your liberties, and <laughs> and show you how you're getting fucked. Dude, that's the play. I, I want redemption. I want... I want, I want rede Especially me, boy. I, I, Dude, I have clips uh, queued up that I'm working on from episodes like one through six. What? That we're just going to... I'm going to start posting them again for new listeners because oh, there's man. a huge different... There's a, such a bigger pool of people listening now that probably didn't go all the way back to episode one. But the things you were saying back then have kind of transpired. Oh, man, please. I can't wait to see those. Uh, Nino America texted me. He said, hey, man, I just finished watching your, your um, live stream with that dude, Gil, mm -hmm. American Cholo. And he was like, man, I feel like you got him good. And, you, you know, you're, you're, <laughs> he was like, man, you smart. You know, you're saying some, some important shit. And, um, and we're going back and forth. And I told him, I was like, hey, at any point did I say to Gil and his audience, all right, if we're back at war, come back and talk to me. Because right now we have peace. And, and um, I remember you bringing that up. Yeah, I don't know what episode. If you guys, if y'all see it somewhere, um, let us know what episode, a minute marker. If you can't clip it, clip it, please. <laughs> um, but those are the kind of clips. And it could be a lucky guess. It could be like, ah, oh, you were just saying stuff and you're not really factoring in how we had to get out of there anyway. So, yes, I understand. But I was right. <laughs> You can't know, let it go to a waste. lot of relationships have, have gone sour from people wanting to be right. But I was right. That's true. Mm hmm So, and you know what, you know what else? This is like off subject, on subject. But like, as we're talking about how the lefties and the righties, you know, we're not seeing eye to eye. We're all, each side is biased. You know, there's no fucking center anymore. Um, everybody's so triggered and, and polarized and everything's politicized. The talk... And the misconceptions around if you unvaxxed people would just stop shedding, you know what I mean? Like, it's because we're in this because you're not vaxxed. It's a pandemic of the unvaxxed, all that type of talk. And then you try to hit them back with the clip of like, there's a lot of studies that show that we're creating the environment where this vax that's not really killing the bug is actually making shit worse because of the environment we're creating where it's able to mutate just like when you give a kid antibiotics and they don't finish it don't nobody want to hear that it's just like oh i didn't hear that on msnbc joy reed didn't tell me any of that rachel maddow didn't tell 
Dude, all those Rogan clips, for example, like the one with him and Evan uh, Hafer from Black Rifle or the ones with uh, Brett and, and the doctor, uh, who was it, the Dr. Coy, I believe what his name was. People ain't trying to have that. They're like, what does this meathead I, UFC commentator know? I might just have to post it because I self-censor a lot. I hold back a lot. Be- do you? Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, I really do. I mean, I don't know if people know, but like on my Instagram, it's like, man, there's some stuff in my phone I want to post. But you're up against the algorithm, big tech, Mark Zuckerberg, um, trolls. You know, I can already hear now. If I post a clip of Rogan saying there are actual PhD medical scientific studies, very concerned scientists who are wanting to ring the alarm, but they don't want to speak up that we might be making shit worse with this type of jab yeah. right and this is why i'm gonna get, I'm gonna get attacked uh, yeah, exactly and not only that you might actually you might f- you'll feel a bigger reper- repercussion repercussion online from your profiles than somebody who has 12 million followers like rogan they're not just going to remove him from instagram right mm. or shadow ban him to the to the point where he might notice that like where's all of my reach but when somebody has even though not two hundred thousand isn't small but to them it's not joe rogan right so they're not going to attack joe rogan like they might attack a you or a uh, uh, Bryson, or some somebody like that, yeah, or yeah. Chef Gruel, for instance. Mm-hmm. They'll just they'll just flick you off like a fly from the platform, and, yeah. and that's it. You'll do nothing about it. You'll do nothing. To yeah. quote Conor McGregor, nothing, nothing. You'll do yeah. nothing. So nothing. That's why it's it's really important for people to support the Patreon, right? Uh, and and hop on board so that as time goes on and we do get that 2.0 opportunity in the future with this with another election or even the midterms. Um, we'll have to talk about that stuff behind a paywall because it's just mm-hmm. not something you can literally do on these platforms and not feel repercussions of losing reach or your or your profiles altogether. The social credit score is here, ladies and gentlemen. The social credit score is here. You're having a self censor. Big tech don't want you talking about nothing. So, you know what you just said, man. We're literally at a point where in America. We, we can't even discuss what we want to discuss. And it sounds boring and lame, because as much as we want to be entertaining on the RPT shows, that's why we have Chingo Chats. We're, we're premi- premiering or debuting Chingo, uh, R- or rather RPT Shorts, where we're going to talk about pop culture, entertainment, things that are going on in that world. But for the Red Pill Tamales on, on Mondays, or rather on Wednesdays and Fridays, a lot of these subjects you can't make appealing online because they just literally don't let you, right? You can't post it online. You can't even make it funny and also post it online. It's a damn shame. So it's, it's up to the people that want to support it to support it. Yeah. And you wonder why so many people are blind. Yeah. Because they dismiss a Rogan. They'll shadow ban me. And it is what it is. This yeah. is, uh, hey, 1984. Actually, it's 2021. Uh, social credit score is here. You will self-censor and you will not talk about certain things. And it's even to the point where the DHS is going to call you the T word if you have certain opinions. In You're America. Not You're not wrong. In America, bro. In America. But hey, don't worry about it. I'm just a sellout. I'm just a comedian. I'm a coconut. I'm whitewashed. And uh, I, I want to be white so bad that don't believe anything that I say. But hey, social credit score is here. And you will not upset Mark or Zuck. Mark or Zuck? Yeah. And even we could talk about this on uh, RPT Shorts. Uh, cancel culture has made it into hip hop. We'll talk about that on RPT Perfect. Shorts. Perfect. On that note, we have a few of those to record after this. For sure. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This was episode number 80, season 7. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your week. Stay positive. Stay patriotic. Hey, man, take care of your community. Take care of your family. Raise your kids right. And please spread the word about what we're trying to do. This is RPT. Peace out.